In today's video we'll take a look at some AutoCAD features that are rarely used, but extremely useful. We're focusing on the Parametric tab. Here you'll find geometric constraints that you can apply to objects, as well as dimensional constraints you can apply between entities in AutoCAD. Let's see how it all works. What I want to do is create a simulation of the kinematics of a piston mechanism using these three elements, which should look familiar to mechanical engineers. What will I do first? First, I'll fix this initial element, which represents the crankshaft, so that it can rotate around this point. To do that, I'll select the coincident option. Click on this point, and then select the circle. Its center point is automatically detected. There we go. Now this element can rotate around that point. But first pivot point must be fixed. Next, we want to connect the connecting rod to the crankshaft. We'll again use the coincident constraint. But before that, we need to fix this point. So we'll select the Fix option and click on this point here. This symbol shows that the point has been fixed. Now, let's connect the connecting rod to the crankshaft, again using the coincident constraint. Select one point then the other, and the rod is in place. We'll repeat the same process to connect the connecting rod to the piston. And there it is. Now we've basically created a chain of connected components, and when you move one of them you'll see that the others move as well. Take a look. When I move one part the rest follow. However, you'll notice that the piston doesn't move quite the way we want it to. Ideally, the piston should always move vertically, relative to this point here. And yes, there's a way to set that up. We'll use the coincident constraint again. But first, be careful. If you click immediately, AutoCAD will accept endpoint of selected line and might place the constraint between this point and pivot point in center of crankshaft. This one over here, which is incorrect. So, First select the object, in this case, this line here. Then select the point right here. And now you can see the piston is aligned with the point around which the crankshaft rotates. But that still isn't enough. The piston can still tilt left and right which we don't want. We haven't yet restricted its movement to only vertical motion. So now, we'll select the object that we want to keep vertical, that will be this line here. You'll see a symbol indicating that the line is now locked in a vertical position. Now, when you start moving the piston, you'll see a proper simulation of the kinematics of a piston mechanism. In the next video, we'll look at how to apply dimensional constraints. So far, we've only been working with geometric ones. We'll also explore how to perform a dynamic analysis. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, and follow us to get notified when the next video goes live.